الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome back We are now starting a new series And insha'Allah it will be a beneficial one So I've decided to now go backwards rather than forwards We've finished the seerah Which is the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam By the will of Allah and now I've decided to go back to the beginning to, to finish the series about the Prophets. I've uh, always started the series on the Prophets, but I've never been able to finish it. And uh, the reason I went back on it is since we're talking about the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet, and it makes, more, it makes sense as well to continue talking about the Prophets and the Messengers uh, because we can learn so much from them. Insha'Allah, we will, I will try to bring from them many lessons, derive from them a lot of the lessons that we can as we go along, insha'Allah ta'ala. I think you'll be quite intrigued. And then once we finish this series, insha'Allah ta'ala, by the will of Allah, we'll go backwards, we'll go back into the future. So from the time of the Prophet's death into the Khulafa, the life of the Khulafa and so on. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophets and the Messengers of Allah. I'll begin by stating the sources and the references that I used in order to do my research. Obviously, it's not just done in the last few weeks. It's done all my life. As far as I can remember, like yourselves, for those of you who like reading and researching and asking, the main book that I took most of the information from about the Prophets and Messengers, including the history that surrounds them, is a reference which a lot of the scholars use. It's called al bidayah wa Nihaya, the beginning and the end, by the great scholar Ibn Kathir. Ever heard of Imam Ibn Kathir? This Imam also wrote a book called Tafsir Ibn Kathir, the interpretation of the meanings of the Qur'an that's been translated in English. Unfortunately, this great reference, al Bidayah and Nihaya, it hasn't been translated as far as I know. But they've taken bits and pieces from it. There is a summarized version of the stories of the Prophets by Imam Ibn Kathir as well, which is called Stories of the Prophets by Imam Ibn Kathir. Qasas al-Anbiya Imam Ibn Kathir. It's been translated, but its translation is inadequate. It's, a, it's not a good translation at all. If you read it, you can tell. Another source is Tariq al-Tabari, the history by the book of uh, Imam al-Tabari. But I don't rely on that too much, and I'm going to explain why. The other sources that I've used are obviously Tafsir ibn Kathir, because there are lots of verses of the Qur'an which talk about the Prophets and the Messengers. If you were to follow the passages in the Qur'an, you will find that nearly half of the Qur'an talks about prophets and messengers and people of the past. So, Tafsir ibn Kathir. I've also looked at re miscellaneous researches from different ahadith just to make sure that they are authentic. And uh, many researches done by different scholars on the topic. I read uh, a thesis. PhD thesis on the Prophets and Messengers and gather them all together for you insha'Allah ta'ala to the best of my ability. In this course I've also looked at uh, uh, scientific facts and I've looked at uh, Western views and other religions to try and put it all together. So I've tried my best, it's not an easy task. We hope insha'Allah ta'ala that you benefit so much from this series and we all move out of it with a better understanding of our religion more appreciation of our Creator and more aware of our purpose in life and where we're heading. My brothers and sisters in Islam, hold on, let me just, uh, this camera is going in and out, I'm trying to stop it, let me see. Okay, there we go. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, let us go from the beginning. In order to talk about the Prophets, I need to start with the first Prophet of Allah, Adam alayhi salam. 
But I also need to address a few things that happened before that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always there. He was always what? He was always there. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu was asked by his companions. There were a group of people that came from a place called Yemen. They said to him, we have come to ask you about some questions about the deen, religion. And they asked him, before the creation of all this, before the heavens and the earth, heavens means the skies, the universe, the cosmos, and the earth, What was there? And he said, Kan Allah. This hadith is in Bukhari, narrated by Abu Dharr. He said, Kan Allah. There was always Allah. He is the beginning and He is the end. And His throne was upon water. They said, And then what? He said, then he created the pen. And he said to the pen, write. And the pen said, what should I write? Allah said, write everything that will be. And the pen began to write everything that will be in existence within the known universe. Our known universe. And whatever is unknown, of course. So the universe and the earth. My brothers and sisters in Islam, there has to be a beginning. It's impossible that we are here without an original beginning. And the more you think about it, the more the mind will lose the plot. There has to be a beginning. Otherwise, there cannot be us. Everything has a beginning. And you cannot ask what was there before the beginning. If I told you it's the beginning, what was there before the beginning? Is that linguistically correct? Can anyone answer that question? The beginning of everything. What was there before that beginning? The question is wrong cancels itself out. Because it's called the beginning because it's the beginning. Replace it, the beginning, with a name whom, which is presented to us in the Qur'an and in all the other Bibles, the holy books of the past. He is Allah, the Creator, the God, worthy of worship. And there is nothing like unto Him. Allah was always there. And وَلَمْ يَكُمْ قَبْلَهُ شَيْءٍ Rasul Sallallahu said in another hadith, there was nothing before him. If there was something before him, then that means he is no longer the Creator. Allah's name is Al-Khaliq, the Creator. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Everybody accepted this until the 21st century when the idea of Darwinism came out. And even that, scientists continue to debate about it and argue about it. And we have the theory of evolution. If you realize that I said the theory of evolution is how it began. It was a theory, an idea, a hypothesis of evolution. Suddenly it became the evolution theory. They put theory behind the word. As time goes on, I mean... I studied science, and when I was younger, than, at my younger days, I remember we used to say the theory of evolution. One day it came the evolution theory, and now they just say evolution, as if it's a fact. But no significant you know, breakthrough investigations and discoveries have been made to change it to a fact. Is they just start to believe it more and more. And I don't want to dwell today too much on evolution, because we want to go into the story of the prophets. However, the stance of Islam on evolution is not all that difficult to understand. Neither is it a taboo to talk about. Nor should we shun 
the idea of evolution completely, brothers and sisters. A lot of our scholars of the past and present haven't studied science that well. And those who have studied science well, who claim that evolution is God, or whatever is the beginning, of, is, is the thing that creates everything, there is no God, are people who are not attached to the religion at all themselves. Our parents and our forefathers, they swear as a taboo, what's this evolution, is haram, is kufr. I say to you, brothers and sisters, Islam does not reject all the aspects of evolution. For example, evolution talks about species that transform to different species. Something called microevolution and macroevolution. Something that transforms from something to something completely different, evolving over time, the circumstances surrounding it. I don't want to go into too much technicality because not all of you can understand all the technicalities, but Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, for example, human beings, this is a Sahih hadith, human beings were very big and tall. Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Prophet said he was about 60 arm lengths tall in the sky, relative to us. And then he said, and people kept on becoming shorter and shorter over time. They evolved into something else. Slowly. We do not reject or affirm that there were creations before us other than the jinns and the angels. Islam doesn't deny that, nor does it talk about it. There could be. Are there, is there alien life form? Is there bacteria outside of the world? Maybe, maybe not. We don't say yes or no. It's irrelevant to us. It doesn't make us get closer to Allah or not. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, يَخْلُقُ وَيَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ He is always creating whatever He wills. يَخْلُقُ In the Arabic grammar is called فَعَلْ مُضَارِعَ مُضَارِعَ means now, in the present. Allah is now creating Whatever He wills. Every day Allah is doing something new. And He creates, not created, He creates always things you do not know and cannot perceive. You will never know, or you have never known, or you will know in the future. We shall show them our signs in the horizons, in space. And in their own biology. And things they have never heard of or known before. Or things they do not know in the present. So we, we, we don't reject the idea that there was, for example, dinosaurs before humans. Or that things did evolve into something else. Or things were something and became something else. We don't reject that idea. And nor do we affirm it. If there's scientific facts, we say we accept it. We're not stupid people. Right? But what we do reject is what the Quran and the Sunnah and what the Prophets have told us to be a fact. And when scientific theories say something completely opposite, something that denies that fact. For example, Adam is the first human being. In science and evolution, they tell you that there were the human beings have existed before, but they were just of different shape, the Homo sapien and likes, and all those stories about millions, millions of years ago. They claim to have found fossils and bones. Maybe they have. Maybe there were creatures before us that looked like humans. Maybe we don't know. Maybe, but this particular human race, us. The Qur'an says it began with Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the first and the creator. Creating in Arabic al-khaliq means the one who makes something that has never been before. When you say khalaqa, it means to make something that has never been before. Nothing before it or like it has ever been. Allah also uses the word ja'ala, yaj'alu, to make as well. But ja'ala means something like it has been there before, but now 
something similar to it is being made. Uh, either from it, or from it it became, such as evolving. For example, the seed grows, it produces fruit. The fruit then has a use by date, the plant dies, and it withers away and turns into soil. We say, plantation is a creation from the beginning. It's turning into soil and withering away is a making. It's a result of the creation, the result of the creation of the plant. We are created, and then from us, we reproduce. That reproduction is not a new creation. It's an old creation. It's a, crea it's a result of the original creation who is, Ibra who is Adam Alisa. Now, I'm making that distinction because you're going to see, inshallah, when Allah Subhanahu speaks about the creation of Adam, He says, I created Adam. And then later on, Allah Subhanahu uses in different verses the word Ja'ala instead of Khalaqa to create something new and to make something out of something or something after the origin of something, not something completely new. So you're going to see it's quite a miracle of how Allah Subhanahu speaks of creation in the Quran. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, it says that His throne was on water. So there was Allah and then He created His throne. The throne is not God. Allah created the throne. Kana means to be. Then Allah made the throne be. Allah says in the Quran, how does he make things be? Allah tells us in the Quran, when Allah wants something to exist, all he says is be. And it is. And he uses that in relation to when he's talking about Isa, Jesus Christ, السلام, when he was born from Mary, Virgin Mary without a father. He said, it's not a big deal in the verses. It's not a big deal. The example of Jesus Christ is like the example of Adam. He created him from turab, from earth material, from soil. Then he said to him, be. Then he is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, created the throne, created then, and he said, Then the water was created. Water was created. In the theory of evolution and in science, there's a lot of talk about everything coming from the origin of water. Some say that we were fish, and from fish we evolved into humans. Some theory, scientific theories like that. It's not far off from the truth of the Quran. Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ out of water, we made everything living. Or everything is living out of water, whichever way you want to think about it. The point is, nothing can live without being reliant upon the water, except the throne of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent. Allah is not dependent on anything. Allah does not give birth, nor is He fathered by anyone. He is not created, but He creates. And He has a throne, we don't know what this throne is like. But His Majesty has a throne. Allahu A'lam. And Allah knows its nature. And Allah SWT created water. And from water everything became living. As for the pen, we don't know what the pen looks like. It's just called a pen. We just, these, are, these are words we made up. Pen. Something that writes. Something that records. This uh, laptop I have with me here. This laptop. They call it a notebook. Isn't that correct? Notebook. I'll just switch to it. But a notebook, when I used to hear a notebook, $4,000, buy it from Kmart, I used to think, it's a little notebook, why $4,000? It's just 10 cents, 20 cents, 50 cents. But notebook is this laptop, when you come to know it, right? But it's just the names that we use. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about al-qalam, even in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about something which He created that wrote. And in the, He said, write everything that will be. Fi kitab al-maqadir, in the book of decree. Everything that will ever be, everything that will ever exist, Everything that will happen is already written from the beginning. Now you might be asking then, how come if I don't pray, for example, if I'm not a Muslim, for example, if I kill, for example, God already written it upon me. So why is it my fault? The answer to that is, some things Allah wrote that will be without your control, you will not be judged about them. And some things He wrote, not that He wanted them to be or made you do them, but He knew that they will be. And the angels carry out orders from that book of Qadr 
and they implement certain commands on earth. This is something that's only known to Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the pen to write things that will be miqdar. Miqdar comes from also qadr, which means measure. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth was after the pen. He made the universe and the earth created in such a way that it is like a clockwork. A lot of people ask about the verse in the Quran. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, or what's the wisdom behind the verse, or what's the explanation that Allah says, He created the heavens and the earth in six days. Can't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the heavens and the earth in a second? Why six days? Why not five days? Why not four days? Why not three days? Why not more? Why not less? Is He not able? Wrong. All of these are wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create the heavens and the earth in six days because that's how long it took Him. No. He's telling us, I created the world in six days because Allah is telling us in a miqdar. He deliberately created the universe and the earth to work in a clockwork, in a measurement. So that things can live on it according to that measurement. And that measurement requires that time had to be put in place. He put certain things and made them react to other things in accordance to time. And that helps us learn and get along in life and discover and create and make and, invo- and uh, all that stuff. In science, they talk about uh, black matter in space. And they say this black matter we cannot explain. The energy in black matter is so minute that they thought, how can it make anything? Yet it is a time. And the universe is expanding at a rate of tremendous rate. Only Allah knows how fast it's, 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 it's uh, expanding. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it in such a way that it has time. The way it works. So six days because he created everything to work in a time format. Anyway. Brothers and sisters. Allah created the heavens and the earth. Only Allah knows how long ago. Only Allah knows how long ago. The Quran and Sunnah does not explain to us, doesn't tell us how long this earth and heavens have been. It said that the pen was created 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. But as for the heavens and the earth, Allah knows best. We can rely on scientific discoveries, if you like. Millions of years, billions of years, Allah Only Allah knows how long the universe has been there. This is only known to Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created creatures and bacteria and uh, light and the sun and the moon, all that stuff. And He created life forms. As I told you, we don't know how many life forms Allah created. There could be hundreds of life forms before us. And Allah knows. There could have been other creatures that looked like us, didn't look like us, looked like animals. Allahu A'lam. The apes were certainly before us. The animals were certainly before us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَخَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ He created the heavens and the earth. وَبَثَّ فِيهِمَا and مِن كُلِّ دَابَةٍ And He put upon it, on بَثَّ on the top of it, from every type of walking creature. Animal. Insect. Every life form. Except for mentioning the human. This is a long time ago. Dinosaurs, uh, animals that became extinct, all that. And Allahu Alam, what creatures He created? All we know are two. Two types of creatures other than the animals that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, and they are the angels first and then the jinns. It's only in a Sahih hadith, several hadiths in Bukhari and Muslim and others, that the Prophet told us the angels are created from light. Light, nur, the energy of life. And Allah tells us in the Quran, He created the jinns, another life form. An element of fire. Some ulama, some scholars of Arabic, of linguistics, they said that marijim min nar, an element of fire, is referring to the heat waves. When you look at a barbecue, for example, you can see if you look at it horizontally, you will see, uh, I mean, horizontally, you will see vapors, sort of like vapors or like 
heat waves on top of it. Some scholars said they're created from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but they're created of the essence of fire or some material from fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the angels created and the angels don't disobey Allah in anything. They don't have desires like the humans. We can do a whole topic about the angels, but you can all look up about the angels. All I can tell you is this, that they are creatures of Allah that are tremendously beautiful. They have wings. They are made of light. Uh, we cannot see them. Uh, they can transform. They can shape shift. Uh, they don't disobey Allah in anything. Allah tells us in the Quran, they do not disobey Allah in anything and they do exactly as they've been commanded. They do not have desires, shahawat, like what we do. They don't have all these desires these, that make us weak and tempt for things. And the jinns were created after them. The jinns have desires. They give birth to each other. They do all of that stuff. And they existed on earth before the humans, according to the Islamic teachings, and in accordance to ancient teachings of other religions. That jinns have always existed. Christianity definitely believes in jinns. The Jews definitely believe in jinns in the ancient scriptures. The Hindus, many ancient religions, know that jinns existed. And this actually tells us, this is evidence that prophets and messengers existed way before. Because they taught the same thing. With a few differences of laws, that's all. But they all had the same message. Facts remain facts. The unseen remain the unseen. The hereafter remain the hereafter. Allah remained who Allah is. This message never changes. But laws used to change among messengers and prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the jinns. And what happened, to cut the story short, they corrupted on earth. They started to shed blood, kill each other because of their desires and their whims and their evil nature. Of course, jinns, there are Muslims and non-Muslims among them. There are evil and there are good. There are those who save lives and there are those who kill them. There are those, all sorts, just like the human beings. Except their nature is a little bit different in the way they're created and their thought process and what they can do and not do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, describing jinn, some of them they slither. Some of them are snakes. Some of them are types of dogs. Uh, some of them swim. Some of them fly. All these different types of jinns. I don't want you to confuse jinn with shaitan. Satan, shaitan, devil. The word shaitan applies to both jinn and human beings and any event that has a conscious being behind it, any evil event that has a conscious being behind it. So a human being, when they act out in evil, deliberately, we call that person, at that moment, a shaitan. Or the person is doing a shaitan act. So shaitana is really evil acts. And the jinns did a lot of evil. And the jinn, Iblis, the king of the jinns, Allah called him shaitan. And that's why we just say shaitan. Shaitan means that evil jinn, this devil thing that goes around. But the word shaitan applies to any creature that consciously and deliberately acts out in something evil. Or even some scholars said any evil occurrence is called shaitan. So it has a linguistic meaning. However, we apply it to the jinns because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Iblis the shaitan. Because he did the, one of the worst evil acts. We'll find out soon inshallah. To rest you assured, Jinns are weaker than human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored the human being. We have honored the son of Adam. So the shaitan or the jinn does not really have influence and control over the human being. Except in certain circumstances that are related to psychological uh, reactions. That we call them psychological reactions. Sometimes they call them possessions or something like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows the nature of that. In the Quran it's called mas. الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِّ It's talking about the person who consumes riba, usury, on a day of judgment will stand up, 
so wicked and so, so crazy like the example of someone who had been touched by a shaitan now Allahu A'lam what that phenomena is but we use something called ruqya spiritual healing you read Quran on a person who feels that they are affected by this phenomena the Christians used to have it they, the, they used to read the Bible upon them the Jews used to have it and they read the parts of the Torah upon them and it works it works because we don't reject everything in the Torah and we don't reject everything in the Injil so some of it still does work anyway brothers and sisters let's move on to closer to the creation of Adam alayhi salam the jinns corrupted they fought each other they shed blood and the angels were watching all this time the angels were also watching other creations shedding blood and creating evil on earth, corrupting it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them one day, and this is in Surah Al-Baqarah, you can also see in Surah Al-A'raf, in Surah Sad, and in a few other surahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلم which is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And behold, or remember, or recall, وَإِذْ When your Lord said to the angels, I am about to make, جَعِلٌ I'm going to make, upon this earth, Khalifa. Khalifa means those who will be custodians after each other, generation after generation, taking from each other the trust and custodians of the earth. Khalifa is used in honor and high esteem in Arabic. It means two things. Creatures that reproduce and replace each other so others die out others replace reproduce continuously and it also means honorable ones who are going to be given trust a trust to uphold custodians it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe in a system that can never be changed an order that cannot be changed this order is the reason why, one of the reasons why we believe that there must be a designer and a creator who is intelligent beyond our imagination. It cannot be from something that has no intelligence whatsoever. Because there is an order in this universe. Sunnat Allah, Allah says, Sunnat Allah, the way Allah created this universe to be in its system, in its... Uh, Physics and whatever it is. And Allah then says, You will not find a change in the way God created this universe to be and to this order. And you will not find Allah's creation of this order changing. It follows an order. It follows a system. Otherwise we would have no maths. We would have no physics. It will always keep changing. Right. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will create this generation to take over generation. So the angels, what did they say to him? They said, Oh our Lord, are you going to make in it those who will corrupt in it and they will shed blood while we, the angels, we glorify you all the time. And we, and we act and give you holiness 
in every sense of the word. I mean, you know, if you want holiness and you want someone to worship you, here we are, oh Lord, is, have we done something wrong? The angels are questioning, they want to know. They're not debating, they're not arguing. What did Allah reply? He said, I know that which you do not know. The angels are thinking that they are basically the best creation Allah has made. They have a right to think that. They've seen all the creations before. And by the way, you know how Allah says Khalifa? The angels then respond, say, oh, you're going to do, you know, you're going to create on it the same type of creatures that we've seen before, which is evidence. There is a, a, a this, this shows that there's a high chance that there were many creations before us who lived and thought and, and walked and they shed blood and killed each other and wiped each other out, including the jinns. The jinns were outcasted from the earth. They say in some hadiths, I don't know their authenticity, but they are in islands and things like that. Allahu alam, Allah knows best. Allah said, I know that which you do not know, meaning you think that you are the best creation because you worship God the best. But I know something of the future you do not know. This creation that I'm going to create will even surpass you, O angels, in worship. And they don't have to be angels like you. Or they can corrupt as well. That's one meaning of the answer that Allah gave. So He actually answered them. And they went quiet. Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want to say everything. I know that which you do not know. Meaning there's something hidden. There's something hidden for two reasons. Either if I told you, you are not capable of understanding at the level of your intelligence right now. I haven't created you, O oh angels, to understand what I'm doing right now. So even if I told you, you're not going to be able to understand. I'll give you a very, just as an example, uh, compared to the adult, a little child of two years old or one year old won't know that fire is danger. No matter how you try to explain it to the child, the child will not know that fire is danger. All they see is what? Colours. Nice colours. Something that's moving. Children love that. They'll always want to go and touch it. And if you tell them don't touch it, they, they start to cry. Why? Why is mum and dad doing that to me? Why can't I touch it? There's a soccer ball. There's a nice little colourful ball in the middle of the, of the pool in the backyard. If you have a pool, swimming pool. If you, or, or you go to a swimming pool and there's a nice beautiful ball in the middle of the floating in the, in the middle of the... And then a two-year-old wants to go and jump in. He wants to go get the ball. And you try to stop them from going into the pool. The child starts crying. Why, 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 why don't my parents let me have that ball? But you're, you're not thinking about that. You're thinking that it's going to drown. They're not going to understand. So this, one, this is one meaning. That the angels are not capable or intelligent enough in their creation to understand if Allah explains to them about this creation. Number three, it also means, possibly... There was this thing, this creation, he was a jinn, his name was Iblis. He existed among the angels. Iblis is mentioned in the Qur'an in several passages, over 20, 30 passages of the Qur'an, in reference to this, this, this creature, Iblis. He's made of fire, he is a jinn, but he was special. This Iblis, this jinn, he had a rank among the angels, but he was not an angel himself, contrary to what some people think, because, how do I know? In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all the angels prostrated to Adam, illa Iblis kana min al jinn. Except for Iblis, he was one of the jinns. If Iblis was an angel, he would have said, kana min al malaika. He was one of the angels. But he said, he's one of the jinns. And the jinns are created from fire, the angels are created from light. So for those who claim that Iblis was, a, was an angel and then they claim that God changed him into a jinn or, or he was always an angel, he's wrong. It's false. There is no evidence, no proof to it. But he had a high rank and he was special. He was God-fearing, he was, he was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knew Allah's names and attributes better than the most knowledgeable among us. First hand. He was among the angels, man. He saw things we could never dream of seeing. So he was an extremely strong believer in Allah. You could say that Iblis was an extremely pious uh, believer, mu'min, among the highest of the highest. But... Something was wrong. And this something, brothers and sisters, exists in all of us. What is it? Desires. 
and something called the heart. In Arabic, qalb means this force that's inside of us. It doesn't necessarily need to be the organ that pumps. Something within that organ, something that science cannot explain, the qalb, the inner self of you. That thing which you refer to yourself as, like your heart, your, your brain, your eyes, your feelings. That your is your qalb. What is that? That qalb, that, it's also called nafs, there's nafs desires within that qalb. That being, that you, you can also corrupt it or make it pure. What is it? This, man, this creature, Iblis, he had never been tested yet with jealousy or a competition. Iblis accepted that the angels are better than him, superior to him. Why? Because the angels are created from light and light is better than fire. And the angels weren't created from with desires, Iblis had desires and he overcame his desires. So therefore he accepts that the angels are better than him, he respects them. But bring someone, a creation, that is created from a substance that is much, inf much more inferior than fire. That's, that's what Iblis thought at least, that's what he perceived. Anything less than fire is inferior to me. That had never been tested on Iblis yet. No one has ever been honored above him except the angels. And he had this high rank for such a long time. You can imagine, sometimes it happens to us. You go into a job, you start off as a cleaner, let's say, at a school. You're a cleaner, you're a janitor. Then you see all these people, all these teachers, and they're like, oh, wow, one day I'll become like that, and you respect them, right? Then you decide to go into a course, you become a teacher, and let's say you do science, or you do maths, you get a job as a teacher, suddenly the janitor, you know, you feel, oh, he's a janitor. You know? And then, this is a person who doesn't, obviously, has got a wicked heart. As you rise above and you get promoted, suddenly you feel you're superior to others. You won't just accept anything, you know, a certain pay, certain privileges, certain this, and you've got to be called a certain name. And some of us, we go really high to the point where we think we are superior to everyone else, just by being tested with positions and the competition that is sent to you. So, Iblis hadn't been tested yet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell the angels everything, because the angels could understand. However, some scholars said that also Iblis... Allah did not want to tell him everything in detail about this new creation because this new creation was going to have such a huge purpose. And one of the purposes as well, at the same time, is to test this Iblis as well and the likes of him. Because Allah is fair and he will test us in every shape and form. He will test you. He already knows, but in order to prove to you so that what you deserve. What do you deserve? If I were to, to become a doctor or an engineer or, or a plumber or an electrician to become qualified in anything, I said plumber and electrician so that I can show you that we respect all people who strive to gain skills. Then you need to be tested. Not just on paper, you need to go on, on the job, you need to be tested with when somebody hurts you with a word, when, uh, when, when somebody gives you extra job, when someone gives you a job that's not really um, to your job description, when somebody uh, you know, um, gives you some important position you need to solve and all that stuff, this test you, you are rising with it. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test Iblis as well at the same time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that in Iblis there was this jealousy that hadn't yet been tested, ignited. And it's unfair for Iblis to enter paradise one day with this look of Iman on the outside when something on the inside is corrupt. It needs to be manifested and you're not going to get away with it. So Allah said, I'm going to create a creation which is called Khalifa. The angels immediately understood a creation that will pre-produce, but they will also be given cust cust be custodians with a position on earth. They'll be honored like others before them. But the problem is, they're going to shed blood and corrupt, you know, corruption. They'll corrupt the sea, they'll corrupt the land, they'll corrupt the atmosphere, they'll corrupt the environment, they'll corrupt everything, right? Allah says, I know that which you do not know. This creation is different. This human being is different to any other creation you've ever seen before. Remarkable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told in the Sahih Hadith, Rasul Sallallahu said, Allah took, now be careful what I'm saying here, Allah took a handful of Turab, or Teen. Turab means soil. Teen means clay. 
Both of them same thing. They are earth material. From all over the earth. From all the different types of soils and earth. And when we say handful, it's not literal. Qadda. Qadda means we say handful, but not literally. Not like you imagine hand and as full of a hand. Not like a liter or half a liter. No, we don't say that. Qadda means a, a bunch. A, you know, an amount. An amount. So as to say, Allah gathered an amount of the soil which He created on earth from the different types of earth. Different types and colors of earth. The different colors and the different texture and the different density. And so, and He created Adam from it. He created Adam from it. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is why you find that there are different colors of human beings. The dark and the light and everything in between. And there are different characters or, or what can we say, uh, tendencies and attitudes among the human beings. We can improve our attitude, but there are people who are born with certain instinctive traits. The rough type, the soft type, the pleasing type, Right? The stubborn type. Or the, uh, the, maybe in other words, maybe I used the wrong words, but different types of people. So the Prophet ﷺ knew this, and that's why it made him able to be a good leader. He understood that different people, sometimes they just have different personalities. That's the word, personality, not attitude. Attitude is the wrong word. Personalities. And it's very hard to change your personality. So what do you do? You embrace it, but you try to look after your character and behavior, and you accept people according to their personality. Some people can't change it. No one can say, my personality is lying. I can't change that. No, that's not a personality. That's an attitude. That's a character. That's a behavior. You have control over. Personality is something they instinctively do and you don't have. Sometimes they're habits, but that's not a personality. You develop them. Personality is something that you don't know where it came from. You were born with it. Allah knows best. But it teaches us to tolerate and to accept people who are a bit different to us in their personality. And you need to change your approach towards them sometimes. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah created from all the earth Adam. And the reason his name is Adam in Arabic means from the essence of the earth. I mean Adam al Ard, which means the essence of the earth. That's why it's called Adam, meaning earth creature. Earth creature. Sounds like aliens, Kamashans come and say earth creatures. So this is an earth creature. Adam, created from earth, created from soil, created from the essence of earth, from the same particles of earth, from the same uh, bacteria of earth. So we are from earth. And to it will return. My brothers and sisters in Islam, yes, we have elements from the stars as well, if you want to go into science, before the scientists talk. Allah did say we sent down steel, we sent down iron. And there is a relationship between the solar system and the celestial planets and the stars and the earth and all of that stuff. But this is Allah's creation. Anyway, Allah created Adam alayhi salam. In the Quran, Allah states that He created Adam from different uh, textures. And you'll find that when you read about His creation, there are different terminologies used. In some verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He created the human, al-insan, as we're called insan. Insan comes from the word uns, which means company, because man in his nature human beings in their nature are people who are social beings and they like company Uns. and also it means nisyan which means they, they're forgetful as well that's what makes the human being forgetful and loves company sometimes he says min teen. he created you from clay other times he says min tura, from soil other times he says min salsali from a type of ceramic. You know ceramics? Salsa, because when you tap it, it makes a whistling sound, a ringing sound. That's why it's called salsa. The Arabic language is often used uh, to sound. To sound the same as the element itself. So if you tap a cer hollow ceramic, it makes a sound. It's called salsa. Uh, sometimes it says, min salsa alin kal fakhar, from a type of ceramic like clay like clay. Sometimes Allah says, min salsalin min hama'in masnoon. 
from a, a ringing type of ceramic. Min hama in masnoon, from a clay that changed its color over time. Clay that changed its color over time and smell over time. It started to smell over time. Leaving clay for a long time, it changes into, it solidifies and then it changes color and smell. Masnoon, masnoon means shaped. You were shaped. All of these are not contradictions. The Prophet ﷺ tells us, he explains to us, that first of all, Allah created Adam. Oh, and there's another Quranic verse, it says, مِن سُلَالَةٍ مِن طين. A human being, Adam, Adam, was created from the finest of the finest of earth material, of clay. So, you know, the earth has so many elements in it. Like when you, when, you, when you dig for gold, when you mine for gold, you don't, you don't get the pure yellow gold. You know that, right? You get it mixed with rocks and other materials. Isn't that correct? And then you've got to clean it up. And the more you clean it up, the more pure it becomes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He created the Adam from the purest and finest of the finest of earth material. The best. The best and purest form. Finest of the finest of earth material. That's what we were created from. We just call it Turan. Or clean clay. Allah then mixed the, this earth material with water and it became clay. And then it became sticky. Sticky. Moldy. Uh, من طين لازم Allah says in the Quran إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن طين لازم We created him, human being, from clay which became sticky when you mix it with water. Then it became solid which is salsal. When you bang on it, it makes a ringing sound. And then it changed color. Hama. And smell. It started smelling yucky, ugly. Then, masnoon, it was shaped. It was shaped in a form. Almost like a statue. Allah says in the Quran, thumma, after mentioning all this, in other verses, thumma, and then later on, thumma, okay. In the English you say, then, for time, then. But then doesn't tell you how soon. Like then, as in, Two minutes later, ten minutes later, days, months, years later, centuries later. You have to say immediately or a little bit later then. In Arabic, you have two different words. Thumma and fa. Uh, these are two main words. There's other words too. Fa means immediately then. Like almost, almost immediately. Almost sim simultaneously. Thumma means over a period of time. Which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and left him there for a little while. And there's a wisdom from that. Thumma, and then after a period of time, Allahu Adam, how long? Sawwarnaakum. Allah gave Adam. When he says you, the humans, it means our father, because we're from our father Adam. He made, he gave you a surah. He gave him what gave you a picture. An identity in your facial, in your face, in your body, your texture, in your colour. We were all the same, exactly the same. Rasul said, None of you is better or superior to another. Kullukum min Adam. You are all from that one cre creation, Adam. Wa Adam min Turab. And Adam is from the earth, from the Turab. So, why do people sit there thinking they're superior to others? The arrogant, superior people. No, it's superior to another. Except in your actions and values which you stick to. It's your actions that define you, your belief that defines you, the values that you stick with and believe in. So Adam a.s. is all our father. Then Allah gave him a beautiful form, a face. That is very sacred to Allah. Giving you a face, this identity, this unique identity, is sacred, is holy to Allah. You know what it means, sacred? It doesn't mean you're godly. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is sacred. It should not be touched. It should not be changed. 
It should not be imitated. It should not be altered or played with. It should not be ridiculed. It should not be damaged. It should not be hurt. It should not be disgraced. It should not be mocked. It is among the major sins to change Allah's creation, to change the features that gave you your identity for no, for no serious reason. For no serious reason. For example, some people who want to change their nose shape just because they don't like the way it looks. Not because of any serious reason. They want to change their eyes just because they don't like the way they look. They want to change their lips. When it can fatter, thinner, loud, I don't know what. Just because they don't like the way it looks. Or because fashion statements tell them that. Society tells them that. And now we've got cloning and we've got stem cell research and we've got this idea that science going into the DNA of the human being before when, when they're just an embryo and they want to alter and change your identity, the colour of your hair, the colour of your eyes. Allahu Akbar. We're soon to destruction, guys. In my days, back in the 90s, when we were studying uh, biomedical science, we had to write an essay about cloning. In those days, cloning had just started new and there was this sheep called Dolly. They called her Dolly the sheep. And she was the first successful outcome of cloning. But it didn't last for long. It died. It wasn't sustainable. And that's only after they did hundreds and hundreds of cloning experiments, all of them died. And still till now, they're suffering with it. It's not... Eh, they probably have been successful a little bit for a little short time, but it's unstable. The point is, anyway, Allah subhanahu wa does, has forbidden us to change our creation, our form. Not only the human being, but even the animals. We're not allowed to touch the animals or harm the animals or change the animals. And you will find that Iblis, the devil, the great devil, he said to Allah out of defiance, just to be evil. Part of evilness. Iblis said this. He said, O oh God, I'm going to command the children of Adam. I'm going to make them and trick them and manipulate them to change your creation. I'm going to make them clip the ears of their livestock, their cattle and their sheep and their goats. I'm going to make them clip their ears, to cut, cut parts of their ears off. And has that not happened? This is attributed to the evil manipulation of the shaitan, of Iblis, and his defiance to Allah. He said, among the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to make them change your creation. Because he knows that this is sacred. Allah has honored the human being and made you to the best form. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says, ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ Another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah الذي جعل الأرض قرارا Allah الذي جعل لكم الأرض قرارا والسماء بناء وصوركم وصوركم فأحسن صوركم ورزقكم من الطيبات my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is Allah who made for you. Ja'ala means he caused. Ja'ala, he caused. He made it become for you. Ja'ala lakum al He made the earth subservient for you, to serve you, to produce for you, to look after you. Is that correct? Then we get our food from the earth, we drink from the earth, we create from the earth. Isn't that correct? We invent from the earth, we rely on the earth. Allah says he made it subservient to you. Qararan, and he made it stable for you. Qararan doesn't literally mean that the earth doesn't move. Qararan here means, metaphorically, he made it stable for your living. He made it in a way that suits you, living on it, producing from it, living, creating from it. Everything in stability. You know, it's materials, you can make things out of it, doesn't, you, know, you can create. It's not haphazard. Wasama abina, and he made the sky like like a building above you so the stars and everything don't collide with you you know you've got an ozone layer you've got protective layers over the earth not like the other planets the earth is protected allah says he made that for you and he gave you a beautiful picture facial picture facial identity and the sweet is used in the most positive form beautiful picture beautiful form beautiful image and he made your image beautiful. Allah says, Ahsana. There was no image before that except the angels that were created as beautiful as the human being. And subhanAllah, it's just a shell. Underneath the shell, we are terrified. 
the shower that we have, beautiful. Allah says, ذَلِكُمُ Allah. You want to know who Allah is? Look at the creation and it will tell you what I am. I am beautiful and I love beauty. Allah is artistic. He's creative. Allah innovates and creates. He's careful, he's tender, he's kind. He loves things to be in a tender form. Rasul Sallallahu said, In Allah Jamil and Jamal, Allah is beautiful. He loves people who make beautiful things. Allah the Prophet peace be upon him said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, He loves kindness. And he said, nothing that you apply kindness to except that it be, except good comes out of it. This is what Allah is. You look at the creation, you look at the creatures, you look at the human being, everything in harmony. Allah is harmonious, He loves harmony. Anyway, Allah. O oh, glory be to Allah, how honorable He is. Rabbul Alameen, the Lord, the protector, and maintainer, the one who looks after all of the worlds. Brothers and sisters in Islam, He gave him an image. And the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim this hadith is, Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَّا خَلَقَ آدَمَ خَلَقَهُ عَلَى صورته. When Allah created Adam, He created him on his actual original form. Some people have misunderstood that hadith. They think that when, when, when the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah created Adam on his image, they think that in the image of God. And that's what Christians say. No. Allah created Adam on his own image. Meaning, Adam was not born of anyone. Adam was not a child and grew and developed. Adam did not evolve. Adam was not made out of another human being. Adam, as he was, an adult, 60, 60 arm lengths long, 20 arm lengths wide, beautiful as he is, as he is. His creation started like that. He started like that, an adult form. That's what it means, ala suratihi. He started like that. Bang. He left him there for a little while before, before he gave him his image. As I said before, an iblis. The whole world, you know, angels were talking about it, Iblis was talking about it. What is this creature that Allah is creating? Why is it so special? When he left him there, two things happened. Iblis went to look at the body and study it out of jealousy. It was to see if it's better than him. And the angels were talking among each other, what is this creature? See, when you want to make something really special, you let people talk for a little while. Big advertisement. Because it's something big, it's huge. So you let the whole angels of the skies talk about it. Every angel, this human being. And some angels said among each other, Well, look, if Allah creates this human, it's not going to be better than us. You know, it's not going to be better than us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ Once I have formed him, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِهِ and I have blown into him from my special soul. At that moment, immediately, I want you to prostrate to him, to make sajda to him. Blown into him from my special soul. This soul, brothers and sisters, is not an attribute or description of Allah himself. The soul is not from Allah. Here, it's a metaphor in Arabic. When you talk about an object and you say it is mine, it doesn't mean it's part of your body. It's yours mean in your possession. Sometimes you also say, sometimes you have a, a, you know, a special student. You say, that student, mine. That child, mine. You don't mean they're literally yours. They, you mean they are the most special. They're the most honored to me. They're like the best. They're my favorite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a soul. He created it. The soul, a ruh, is created. And Allah called it ruhi, meaning a soul that is special. And some ulama make tafsir on this saying, it has never been used on anybody. No other creation was created from that special soul which Allah created. So Allah called it ruhi. Everybody knew it's God's. No one touch it, no one talk about it. It's the special soul. That's what it means. 
a special creation of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored and favored this soul never used before. He said, when I place from that ruh of mine, that special soul, into this creature, Adam, I want you to prostrate to it in honor. In honor of what? In honor of Allah's creation. Allah created it. It's a new creation made from his special soul. You're honoring Allah by prostrating to Adam. Adam is not your God. You're honoring Allah's creation. Now the angels, they said we will be the most knowledgeable, we'll be the most pious, we'll be the most superior, don't worry, we are Allah's angels. So Allah put the soul into Adam, He brought him, and before they prostrated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instantly, instantly, kun, He taught Adam the names of everything. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا The word عَلَّمَ in the Arabic language, must, it necessitates two things. That you know what something is, what its name is, and you know what it does. That's called ilm. So it's not just like a cocky cockatiel, you just sort of memorize names and you don't know what they're for. You also know what it is for and what it is and what its function is. So ilm and hifl are two different things. Memorization and learning are two different things. Learning, this is a bottle. That's the name. That's what people call it, so I know that. And I know that this is a bottle, and I know why it's called a bottle. Allah says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَ Everything in existence in this earth, on this earth that He's going to be created on, he knows it all. ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ And then, he brought these objects. Few objects. I don't know what objects they are. And he placed them in front of the angels. فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِ بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ Tell me their names. See these objects? Tell me what they're called. Adam can identify them. He only has to look at them. And he tells you what it is. Or the other way around. He'll say the name. He'll say the name. And then. So he'll look at the object and tell you its name. Or he will know the name and then bring you the object. So he gave the objects to the, the angels. And they said, Subhanaka. Glory be to you. You are too perfect. We don't know anything except what you have taught us. And then he said to them, didn't I tell you? And I told you, I know that which you do not know. You're not going to understand right now. This creature that I'm creating is something different you can never imagine. And then they bowed to him. So two things. The angels thought that they would be the most knowledgeable. Allah showed them, no, you're not going to be the most knowledgeable. Number two, they have to prostrate to him. You're not going to be superior to him. Why will the angels not be superior to the human, to, to Adam? What's the secret? Is it because Adam was created from soil? Is it because he's got the ruh in him? Yes, the ruh is special. There's something else. The he, Adam has desires. The angels don't have desires. And Adam was able to overcome his desires. He worships Allah regardless of his desires. At that point, he's pure. With those desires, he's pure. So the, Adam, the angels prostrate him. In the Hadith of Sahih, it says that uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, he started to place his ruh, the, the soul, into him. And then the soul went through his head. And then he sneezed. فأطس. He sneezed. Achoo. And the angel said to him, Say Alhamdulillah. So this is before Allah taught him anything, he sneezed. And he said, the angel said to him, Say Alhamdulillah. Which means, all thanks and gratitude belongs to Allah. So he said, Alhamdulillah. So these were the first words from the human being to Allah. It was a speech to Allah, it was directed to Allah. All thanks and gratitude is to Allah. That's our position to Allah. We are always thankful and grateful. What do we recite in the Salat every time? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alam. That's our first position of the human being. That's where we belong to Allah. Then Allah said, Allah replied, Yarhamuka Rabbuk. Your Lord gives you mercy. Yarham is fa'al dhamir. In Arabic and grammar, we say it's an action. Uh, a verb 
a present verb, which is ongoing. Ya, when you add the ya in front of a verb, it means it's ongoing. So Allah's mercy is always ongoing. Yarhamuka Rabbuk. It never stops. And those were the first words from Allah to the human. What was the first words from the human to Allah? Alhamdulillah. First words from Allah to the human? Alhamdulillah. Rabbuk. What do we recite every rak'ah in salat? Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Again, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. How many times? Two each. Allah wants us to know Him like that. Before anything else, Ahsin al dhanna billah. Assume well of Allah. Anaham bi husni dhanni abdi bi. Prophet said that Allah said, I am the way my servant, my slave, thinks of me. Yani, you can only think of Allah in a good way because He's good. It's positive, not in a negative way. Ar Rahman means the source of mercy that encompasses everything. Ar Rahim, the one who's always giving mercy. And those are the first words from Allah to Adam. I finish it off with the, the end of the soul. The soul then play, was placed into his stomach and he felt hungry. He felt hungry. He's, he was actually created in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said he was created in Jannah. The hadith is authentic. I've looked it up. He was created, his body was created inside of Jannah. Which Jannah? We don't know. Allah has many Jannahs. Which Jannah? Allah. Is it the Jannah that we're going back to? Allah. Only Allah knows. But he created him in Jannah. One of his gardens. He saw fruit in the trees. Oh, the eye sees, the stomach reacts, the brain reacts, the sensory receptors, the hunger receptors react. Makes you drool, you want to eat, isn't that correct? Instinctively, that's the instinct of the human. And so the angel and, the, and then Adam tried to get up to go and eat. But his soul was not in his legs yet. So he couldn't walk. So he couldn't move. And the angels, they started to learn about the human being, that the human being is hasty. The human being is hasty. And when you're hasty, you instinctively, if, if you don't think with your brain, you use your instinct, you could do the wrong thing. You can falter. That's why, one of the reasons why we fast, to train ourselves. And Allah says, <laughs> Man was created out of hastings. Then the soul was placed in his legs, and we are only living because of our soul. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I thank you for listening for this first part of the uh, series on the prophets and the messengers. Inshallah, next week we will go on to define what a prophet and messenger is, how many there were, what is their purpose, who were they, and then we'll begin with Adam alayhi as-salam. Jazakumullahu khair wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 wa s